All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Felicia. Uh, yeah, welcome in, you guys. I'm excited for this one. This is kind of a cool class. And before we get started, I kind of want to show you uh, what we're getting into here. We have a bunch of different pumpkins. I'm going to show you three different methods to decorate your pumpkins with folk art drizzle. But before we get into those uh, different methods, I want to talk about folk art drizzle. So if you are uh, new to pouring paint or any kind of fluid art, this is folk art drizzle, an all-in-one fluid art painting program. So this is a pre-mixed fluid art paint. You can pour on canvases, uh, lots of different surfaces, and it's indoor, outdoor. And obviously today we're gonna be doing these pumpkins. And the great thing about this is that these can go outside after you paint them with folk art drizzle. So the three ways that we're gonna go through teaching you uh, these designs today are, we're gonna start with um, a drip pumpkin. So let me move my pumpkins over here. So you can see right behind me right here, we've got this giant stack of pumpkins. And these are some awesome, awesome color combinations in the Folk Art Drizzle line that we've done. And we've just dripped the paint directly out of the bottle. So it's really that simple. It's very, very easy to do. We're gonna start with that one. Then we're gonna do a splatter. So this is again, out of the bottle. And we're just gonna kind of squirt paint all over our pumpkin. And then the third design that we're going to do is this great jack-o'-lantern face using our dried paint. So one thing I wanna note is we will cover this. This will be our last one. Uh, you want to make sure that you pour your paint into a nonstick pan ahead of time. And by ahead of time, I mean probably about a day or two to let it dry. So if you haven't done that, you won't be able to follow along necessarily with this one. That's one of the tricks to um, paint pouring and using paint skins is that you wanna make sure you pour into your pan well in advance of when you wanna craft your project because the paint has to dry. But that's the only caveat to this pumpkin. Otherwise, I'll show you how to cut out our paint from the pan and make a face and then use outdoor Mod Podge to Mod Podge it onto our pumpkin, which is a really fun way to do it. And again, it's an outdoor formula of paint mixed with outdoor Mod Podge. So this pumpkin will be ready to go outside. Now, just a note before we begin, you wanna make sure you have at least three pumpkins if you're doing all three of these designs and you wanna base coat them with your favorite black paint. So I've just used a matte black indoor outdoor paint and um, I see a question about glow in the dark. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Um, you wanna make sure that you use a multi-surface paint. Folk art multi-surface is a great option. It's indoor, outdoor. And these are just those faux pumpkins that you can get at Michael's all over this time of year. So you wanna go ahead and base coat your pumpkins black. Now, if you don't want black pumpkins as your base, you could definitely just pour directly on them. Michael's sells the orange pumpkins and the white pumpkins, and you could go ahead and pour directly on those orange or white pumpkins. That is totally fine. But I just liked the kind of like dark look to this, and it made them look a little extra special when you put the paint on. And to answer the question that I just saw pop up in the chat, this paint is black light slash glow in the dark. So we have one paint formula, um, a color called Glow Mama. And this is specifically a glow in the dark paint. So if you charge it outside in the sun or under a black light, you can actually bring it into darkness and you'll see it glow on its own. Now we're under a bunch of studio lights, but I'm gonna show you with our little black light flashlight here, how well this shows up. So I, I can kind of do it there. So you can see that green and pink and orange. Again, we're under the studio light, so it's kind of hard to tell all these different colors. Um, if you wanna go overhead too, I wanna show you the jack-o'-lantern here. And this one's super cool. You can see that that face is just glowing like crazy. So for our paint skin, we ended up using some of the uh, two of the greens, one of the neon greens, the yellow and that glow mama. And if you hold your black light over it, or if you sit it out in the sun and you let it charge up and then you pull the sun away or pull your light away, you will see this stay glowing. So this is that's why I chose um, glow mama for this particular project, but you can use it on any of the projects. And let me get a close up here of our pumpkin stack. If we can go back to our front camera and bring these up here. So you can see these are huge. Um, I grabbed some of the larger sizes from Michael's uh, for this stack. And you can do as many of these as you want. Like I made these to put them on a front door and that's the project that we did. But you can definitely bring these inside. Again, this is indoor, outdoor and it is multi-surface. So this basically, this folk art drizzle is great for all kinds of different projects. Now, like I said, I did three pumpkins here. I'm just gonna cover one of them today. 
I'm just gonna go over one color palette, but in the supply list, I have all the colors that I use for all of these different pumpkins. So if you have any questions about specific pumpkins from the photos, I can tell you what colors are on them, but I'm just gonna do one color combination since it's kind of the same step for every pumpkin. So okay. Dylan, we had a question, um, is this paint, <clears throat> sorry, is the paint you are using the same paint uh, used for paint pouring? Yes, this is the same paint that we use on our canvases for drizzle mm -hmm. projects, um, other 3D, uh, kind of canvases or surfaces like pumpkins, it's all drizzle. Yeah, so that's a great thing. You know, I think a lot of times we think about paint pouring as, you know, pouring paint directly on a canvas and swirling it around, which is a great way to use folk art drizzle. And we've taught a bunch of different Michaels classes with folk art drizzle um, doing that, just that. But you can definitely use it for so much more. And 3D objects, kind of, that's the category we call our pumpkins. Um, that's, that's, great for that as well. We did a flower pot class earlier in the summer. And, you know, you really, you can do this painting on any kind of surface. So I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Okay, so we're going to start with our dripping pumpkin. So one of the tools that we wanted to specify for this class is our spinner. So this is our drizzle paint spinner. And this is a great little turntable slash workstation. I use this basically on all of my projects, whether they're canvases or you can see a pretty practical use for our pumpkins here. And it's just a great thing to have because when you're paint pouring, there's a lot of paint going in a lot of different directions and it's nice to be able to kind of direct it in the area that you want it to go. Or if you are doing like a splatter canvas and you wanna spin your canvas, it's just an all around great workstation. So there are a lot of other tools in the Folk Art Drizzle line, but this is one of my favorites that I like to have on hand basically all the time. Okay, so we're gonna start with this color combination here. If we can go back overhead, we're gonna be using um, our warm color palette for this particular pumpkin. We're gonna use Neon Pop. This is that bright, almost creamsicle orange. Canyon, this dark orange. And then we're gonna use our um, Neon Sunshine, this bright yellow color. So I'm gonna start by just grabbing my paint bottle. I'm gonna set these to the side of my way. And the great thing about Folk Art Drizzle is we have kind of designed this bottle very specially. So this has a great little flip top cap on the top and you're able to pour directly out of this top and do so many different projects. I poured directly on canvases on the wall with this. Um, we also have some great little dropper tools if you wanna be really, really precise. But the fact that this has this great cap on it is really pretty useful to do most of your projects right out of the bottle, which is really convenient. You don't necessarily need a bunch of tools if you're doing just a basic pour. So one thing I wanna note is that, like I said, I base coated my pumpkin and I wanna make sure personally, I like when my, um, my designs, when I'm doing drips, barely fall off the pumpkin. A, that keeps my uh, workstation a little cleaner and B, it gives a bit of a different look. It gives kind of more of an intentional look. Now you'll see the ones behind me, they were very um, big and hard to do sometimes uh, just because there were so many different layers of paint. So I kind of, you know, sometimes you have to let the, the project take over and do what it wants with, with fluid art. So I, those kind of ended up going a little out of control and I loved all the paint on it. So I just like went at it, but that's something to consider. And, you know, just try and test this out and kind of take a look um, with your drops that you put on here and kind of get a feel for how fast they're going and where they kind of end up stopping on your pumpkin so that you know how much paint to pour out. And one of the tricks to this is we're gonna make sure that we have varied lengths of drips. So some of them I wanna go almost all the way to the bottom and some of them I only want to go just around the edge here. So we're gonna start with our neon pop and we're just gonna do one of those little test strips. So I like to start a little puddle of paint at the top and then just barely let it start. And these pumpkins are great because they have these really nice defined ridges. So you can start with the pumpkins ridges itself. And that kind of gives you an idea of where to put your, your drops. And you can see, I just made a little mistake there. I got a little paint on the side. That's totally fine. These are meant to be looking kind of messy like an organized kind of messy. So I love when that happens. Now, one thing I do wanna to note too, is to get a really beautiful, heavy effect of paint, I like to do about two different like passes of our paint. So I, we're gonna do this pass today, right now, and I'm gonna use these three colors. 
And then later, I'm going to go back after this has had a chance to cure just a little bit. It doesn't need to be totally dry. It just needs to have a little skin over top. Um, and it's hard to tell because Bogart drizzle is super, super glossy when it dries, but it does start to dry down and it has a bit of a skin that forms before it fully cures. And that's all you need to put another coat of paint on. Um, Fogart drizzle does not uh, bleed. It does not run into each other and make a muddy color, but it does um, blend a little bit. It does like run kind of, if you put all the bunch of colors sideways, they're going to kind of form into one drip. So it will still look pretty. The colors will be vibrant. They're not going to muddy, but I like to have that separation between my layers of paint and then you can kind of build up and get creative. So we'll keep going with this color here. And Dylan, while you're doing that, I wanted to let uh, you and everybody else watching know that we had a question about our uh, uh, turntable and where it can be found. And I linked it to uh, Michael's website. So if you are interested or if you don't have one, uh, you can find it there in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we love our turntable. Like Dylan said, we use it all the time. Just about every drizzle project he does, I see it in the studio right underneath the surface. Yeah, it's super useful. You know, like we use it to tape our canvases down to and then really get going with the spinning action. You can kind of do like faux spin art. It's really, really fun. And so just take your time with this and kind of experiment. So you can see, I kind of evenly space my colors and I kind of go back and forth. Like I just used my neon pop. I'm gonna go back in with my Canyon and we're gonna do a few additional lines. And like I said, it's totally fine if they end up running together. I just like really defined lines. And you'll start to see that here. These two colors are wet on wet. So they're gonna blend just a little bit. And they might end up actually giving us kind of a cool little drip. So I'm just alternating my colors. This is super simple and you can kind of twist this and make it any kind of design that you want. If you want to do different color combinations, if you want to do a rainbow pumpkin, we've done that before. Drizzle has great rainbow colors. You could blend your own colors. So there are a ton of possibilities with this project. And I just let all the paint kind of meld together at my stem. And that kind of ends up looking very organic once the paint dries. So you don't really have to worry about doing anything up there either. I'm going for some slightly longer ones. And if we could go to the front view, I want you guys to see what this looks like from the front. Okay. All right, there you go. So you see, I've got all kinds of different varying lengths of drips here, and this is really organic. You can kind of just go with the flow here, let the paint take over and kind of go where it wants to go. And it ends up looking really cool. Now I'm sitting down to do this. I would probably stand up if I were you. It's just easier to get a full idea of what, what you're doing but it's totally fine if you're sitting down too. So yeah, you can see it looks really random. That's what we're going for. We're not going for a super organized look. We're going for kind of messy, but like a controlled messy. Like we we're kind of intentional with where we put our drips. Now I'm gonna show you some here. I'm gonna show you one drip. This one right here, I poured intentionally, I poured these three colors kind of together. And as we're, we're sitting here, you'll see them kind of run together. They stay separated but they do join a little bit and it, it does look kind of cool. Dylan, are these colors a part of the neon line or is that a different set? Yeah, so there is a neon kit um, that you could definitely use for this. I think I listed that on there as well. And that has four different neon colors in it. It has our neon sunshine, the neon pop, um, neon limeade, and this one, uh, island hop. So yes, these essentially are, I kind of mix and matched and used a bunch of the colors from the line in this one, but yes, you could definitely use the neons because again, almost all the brighter colors glow under that black light. So if you're looking to do like some black light lamps in your porch, uh, this is the paint formula to go for. Okay, so I'm going to go back to overhead here and we're gonna start on our next pumpkin. So that's basically it, you guys. You know, you could see that I left some of that paint drip in a very controlled way. 
and it's not going to go all the way down. It's not going to make my turntable a big mess. And we're just going to let that dry. And then, like I said, you come back in a few hours and add another layer of paint and you're done. And then that looks really, really intentional. It looks kind of cool and, and really organic. So that's, that's how I would approach this one if I were you. So I love it when we get this question, Christine asked, do you have Instagram uh, that I can tag my picture in? Yes, we do. We are um, at plaid crafts on Instagram and be sure to use the hashtags uh, plaid crafts and make it with Michaels. Is there any other, do we have a drizzle hashtag Dylan? I think that's about it. Yeah. 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 That'd be great. If you do, I mean, you could definitely tag folk art drizzle too. That would be great. Sure. Um, and we could see him that way. Okay. That's a great question. Yeah, we, we love seeing your projects. So please share. We, we absolutely love it. Okay, so now we're going to do our next one here. And I'm going to use four, one, basically two new colors. We're going to use our Island Hop, the bright pink, and our Neon Limeade, that bright green. Now this is going to be our splatter pumpkin. I want to show you this one one more time. So here are our splatters. You can see I have some drips. I have some strings of paint. And I, I also recommend after you let this one dry, pick your paint, uh, your pumpkin up and do this on the sides. Again, we're just going to do the top for the sake of this class. But once you get a little bit of um, skin over that paint, you can pick it up and do the edges so that your whole pumpkin is done. So it looks all nice and, and um, finished. So we're going to start with the top here. Got my little pumpkin. And this does not matter at all what color you start with. We're gonna start with Island Hop. And this is kind of fun. This is where you can get a little messy. You can see I have a big piece of palette paper under me, but if you have a canvas tarp or some extra fabric or newspaper, put that down on your table because this one can get a little bit messy and you're probably gonna get your turntable a little messier on this one, but it's a nice rigid plastic. So you can wipe it right off afterwards. You can see on mine, there's some paint staining but that's totally fine because this is a used turntable. We use it all the time. So we wanna make sure people know that we use it. So that is not a problem at all. Again, I'm just gonna use the paint directly out of the bottle here. And we're just gonna start by doing little random strings of our pink. So I just wanna get a little bit on there and kind of evenly spread our colors. And then we'll go back in and finesse. See, and just have fun. Like when you, when you start messing around and you start pouring this paint out, you can see all those little tiny splatters. I love those. They look super, super organic. And this is where the turntable comes in so that you don't have to move your project around. I love this. And you can see our colors are kind of running together just a little bit, but they'll stay nice and vibrant and the pink will stay with the pink and the orange will stay with the orange which is really nice. Because if you were to do this with regular acrylic paint, the paint would muddy together and you'd get kind of a brown color, basically any color combination you'd try. There we go. Love the way that's looking. And then we're going in with our neon limeade. We just used our Canyon. And I didn't do this one super, super heavy. I mean, obviously there's a lot of paint on here, but you could put a ton more paint on here if you wanted. It's really kind of fun and you can do however you like here. Okay, so that's our splatter one. I know this is kind of quick, but that, that's, that's all there is to it. It's really fun and really, really simple. And I hope you guys try this one because you can do this on any kind of pumpkins. You can get really tall, skinny ones, these little tiny guys for home decor. And again, folk art drizzle is indoor outdoor. So this is safe to put on your patio. If it gets a little rain, a little bit of the elements on it, that is totally fine. I love the splatter ones personally. I love the randomness and how it's sort of this chaotic uh, flurry of paint. Yeah. I, yeah, I love those. And under the black light, again, it's super, super cool. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our final pumpkin here. And this is our jack-o'-lantern. So I'm gonna talk you through this process. Um, this has been made with a process that we call paint skins. So this is what happens when you have a nonstick baking sheet. If you're new to pouring, this is a go-to item. We got this in the Wilton section at Michael's. This is a Wilton baking sheet. I think this is like a, almost about a nine by 
13, nine by 14. And you can get all kinds of different sizes of these baking sheets. It's very important that you have a non-stick pan because your paint will peel right out of it. And I'll show you that in a second with a final one that I did, but I'm gonna show you how to create your paint skin if you're new to it. So all we're doing is pouring paint into our pan and swirling instead of on a canvas, basically. So instead of pouring our paint and swirling it around on a regular canvas and then using the canvas as our final project, we're gonna pour the paint into the pan. We're gonna let it dry for a few days. We're gonna peel it up and then cut it and glue it on using our Mod Podge Outdoor and create this amazing jack-o'-lantern face. Okay, so I'm gonna have him right there if you guys can reference him from the side. And let's start our paint skin. So I used another four colors here. Um, the newer one here is Go Green. This is the slightly darker green color. Neon Limeade, that bright, bright green. And look at that under the light. It looks so, so pretty. Our Neon Sunshine, our bright yellow. And that awesome glow formula that I was talking about, Glow Mama. So this is a color in the drizzle line. It comes in one color. It's like a greenish color when it glows. And let me show you the bottle. You can see how great it glows even in the bottle. It's really, really cool. I know it's kind of blowing out, the camera's blowing it out, but you can see that slight green hue. It's like, looks like it's radioactive in this bottle, but it's super, super fun. And like Dylan said earlier, if you leave your project out in the sun and you take it out and put it under your black light or glow light, it's gonna be even more prominent and even easier to see. Yes, it's super fun. And um, if you haven't followed us on Instagram or TikTok, follow Plaid Crafts. And we have a ton of cool videos. I worked on a really neat video showing you how to do these three designs, really abbreviated, of course, because I'm showing you guys very in depth. Um, and I show these under a black light. If you want to see a little bit better, uh, follow us at Plaid Crafts. So it's really, really cool. Okay, now this is going to be as simple as pouring some paint in the pan. There's no real rhyme or reason to this. We're just going to do this like a straight pour. If you're kind of new to pouring, a straight pour is when you just pour your paint directly on your surface and then swirl it around. So I'm just gonna kind of alternate between my colors. You don't want a pool of paint per se. You want this to evenly cover the pan, but not be more than probably about an eighth of an inch thick when it's wet. You don't wanna put, you don't wanna make it too thick because we want this to be nice and pliable and easy to Mod Podge on our pumpkin. And I found that, you know, just pour a little bit in the pan, swirl it around and you get a pretty good result. Now you can see that Glow Mama comes out of the bottle really like creamy white, but when it dries, it dries almost completely clear. Let me get my bigger pumpkin stack here and show you. If you were to pour with it just on its own, so you can not you can barely even see it here because that's how cool and, and uh, hidden it is. So this is our Glow Mama. You can see that kind of glinting the highlight there on that color. It's kind of transparent when it dries down. So that's why we mix it with our other green and yellow so that there's some more substance to it. Okay, so I'm gonna put maybe a little bit more paint in my pan. Okay, that's what I like. I like a little bit of the pan showing and then we're just gonna swirl. And this is super easy. You just let this paint swirl around in your pan. And sometimes in pouring, you use a torch, a butane torch to get bubbles out. But the cool thing about a pan is you can actually just take your pan when you're done and you like your design. So we're gonna keep moving it a little bit. I want it a little bit different. So, okay, I like that design. And what we're doing is gonna just drop it down on our table and the few bubbles that are in here will burst right away. Okay. Perfect. So there's no bubbles in there. If you are a big pouring artist and you do a lot of canvases, that's a great tip to get bubbles out of the top of your canvases as well. So if you have push pins or something on the um, underside of your canvas, it's nice to have like a little barrier between the canvas and the table. You can just drop it straight down and then that'll burst any little bubbles that are in your project. It's really kind of fun if you don't have a butane torch or you don't feel like using one. Okay. So like I said, this is going to dry. Um, this really depends on where you are in the country, uh, what your weather's like, and you just want to come back and check it. Most of the time, our paint skins dry 
um, in about two to three days, just because they're in this solid metal pan and it's kind of hard for it to cure fully. Generally, drizzle takes about a week to fully cure, but that two to three days, you're safe to move it around and put it away. Uh, you don't want to, you know, cover it or anything. You want air to be able to move past it and make sure that it dries your paint down. But you can kind of test the edges when you think it's dry. And if it's not, you can just let it sit a little bit longer and then come back to it. So it's kind of an easygoing, forgiving process. You have a lot of paint to work with, so it's okay if you kind of ruin one little corner of it if you're testing it. And I know this takes a lot of patience, but it's really worth it because I'm gonna show you what the final result is, which is this. I have all my tools here, let me move those. So this is what you'll end up with. So let me show you side by side what we're looking at. So our paint that we just poured will dry down just a little bit darker. And you can see those areas of the glow mama. All these like kind of transparent, semi-transparent areas are our glow mama paint. And let me show you with the flashlight again. You can see how well that glows. Isn't that crazy? So, so cool. You can see that green coming through. So this is super fun for Halloween. Okay, and here is the beauty of it. So if I want to peel my paint up, this is you know just a nonstick pan. Here we go. You can see it in the corner here, it peels right up. It's that easy. And now you can use this like a paper or a decal and we're gonna kind of use it like a decal. We're gonna cut a design out of it and then Mod Podge it onto our pumpkin. So that's how simple this is. This is, I know it takes a little bit of patience, but once you pour and let it dry, you get to do so many different things with this paint skin. And this is the one that I actually used to cut out my great little jack-o-lantern, oh, great uh, jack-o-lantern here. So this is the exact pour that I used for this one. So you can see what it kind of looks like when you start to cut. Yeah, okay. we use paint skins for all kinds of things. We've taken uh, like a little slice like Dylan was peeling up and wrapped that around a terracotta pot for plants during the spring mm -hmm. and summer. That's a lot of fun. And yeah. I got to say, Dylan, I think you already know this about me, but uh, mm -hmm. peeling paint skins off of trays is some of my favorite stuff that I get to do during the day. I mean, we love some paint. Whenever you, we're making projects in the paint uh, pours and stuff, it is just so satisfying. And I think you guys will find it the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at Steven's desk right now, and he has a lot of paint skin projects hanging up around his wall. He loves that <laughs> stuff. Um, it is really fun because it's not something you would think about for paint usually. You think of paint as a liquid, but when you make a paint sheet, it's very um, kind of pliable and really useful uh, for a lot of different projects that you couldn't necessarily pour directly on. Like if I tried to make a stencil or something and only pour and marble around in this design, it would be basically impossible. But when you pour in a pan and you apply it to your surface, it looks like you poured it on, but it's just a little sticker basically. So it's really, really kind of a cool technique that we use a lot here at Plaid. And I'm sure some of you who come to our classes often probably are, are kind of bored of it of like, geez, what can you not do with paint skins? And we're like, yeah, you can do pretty much everything. We have also tested our paint skins to go through a Cricut machine or a silhouette machine. So if you cut stencils, uh, with your machine from Michaels, you can put this on one of your mats and cut it. So if you have any kind of like shape that you're wanting to cut out of it, um, I don't remember the blade. You'll probably have to try a few different blades, but we did put it through here, put it through one of those machines and made a little letter and it was kind of amazing. Um, so I really, really um, want you guys to try this out. It's a great technique and we'll start with our uh, face here now, now that we've gotten through our paint, paint skin spiel. Okay, so this is part of the lesson that I wanna make sure everybody is kind of clear about. So I have done this little graphic here and I drew this by hand. It's not perfect. And it was just something I came up with out of my head. I was like, I wanna make kind of an evil looking guy who's got this, these glowing eyes, nose and teeth. Um, and I encourage you guys to try all kinds of designs. It's very, very easy to look up online um, how to make a jack-o'-lantern face. And some people like really like playful jack-o'-lantern faces, some really scary. You can do all kinds of different shapes. If you want to do your favorite like superhero insignia or different character like Star Wars or something, you could definitely do that as well. So we didn't provide a pattern, but this is the face that I went with. And you can definitely find something just like this online and print it out on your printer 
and do exactly as I did. Just cut it out of your paper and lay it over your paint skin and apply your paint skin to your project. So I know we don't have a pattern for it, but I'm sure you guys can come up with really, really cool designs. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna talk you through how to work with the paint skin. So I've got my design down here and we are going to trace. Now, all you need for this is just a ballpoint pen and it doesn't, you know, we're not looking for a perfect line here because we're gonna kind of use our best judgment and kind of shape this on our own anyways. But I'm going to do this and show you guys. So if you're doing along with me, just pause for a second and pay close attention because this is um, kind of an important part. So you don't want to be stabbing your paint skin. Again, it kind of acts like rubber. So you may drag it with your pen. So you just kind of want to get a really, really loose outline onto your paint skin. So the cool thing about the paint skin is that you can choose what part of the paint skin you want to cut each piece of your jack-o'-lantern face out. So I really like this piece for my eye because it kind of looks like almost like a pupil in the middle of our eye here, this shape, that, that upside down uh, little U there. So this is the piece that I'm going to use. And the great thing about this, once you have your pattern all together, you can just move your pattern around and take little different pieces of your your paint skin and you can trace out um, a piece from there. So you can take any area that you want and we're gonna take our pen and like I said, just a gentle little mark around the edge. And you don't wanna jam your pen into your paint skin. You just want it to glide across the top. And I know you may think that it's not gonna work. It works really well. And this is just a simple little cheap pen. And then we peel our stencil up there and let me bring this up to the camera. You can see it's perfect. See, we don't need anything more than that. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of um, separate our paint skin so it's a little bit easier to work with. And you know what, I'll actually cut this piece off and show you guys up close what the skin looks like, just so you kind of have an idea of how thick to pour your paint. Okay, so here is our paint skin. You can see it's really, really thin but it's kind of acts like plastic or rubber once it's out of the pan. And you can see there's that glow mama right there, kind of translucent. So there you go. This is what Steven loves to play with. Ball it up <laughs> and make some, some little figurines with it. It's, it's really fun. fun. It's kind of addicting. It's like putty. It's kind of fun. Um, okay. So now we're going to get our piece here. And yes, it is very satisfying because it just comes up so cleanly. Like there's no like movie magic happening here. This is just really how easy this project is. We, we all love pan cleaning day here at the studio because you just peel the stuff right off. Okay. Now we're gonna cut our design. Now you can use an X-Acto blade, a pair of scissors, however you like to cut. And we're just gonna trim our little eye shape out of our skin. Again, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette cutting machine, this is where they come in handy. It's perfectly easy to do it by hand, but if you want something really specific or intricate, you can definitely use a cutting machine. And you know, you don't have to follow your pattern. My final pumpkin is kind of organic and looks a little bit different on each side. It's not completely symmetrical. So it's totally fine if you end up making the project a little bit different than the you originally intend. Okay, and there's our little eye shape. I'm gonna to toss this aside for Steven later. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And now we're gonna grab our pumpkin. And we're gonna kind of figure out a place for it. So I think, you know, you kind of wanna space it out. So we'll put our other one about there, put our nose about here, and then our mouth. So one thing to note when you're doing a pumpkin like this, you wanna make sure that you are kind of centering your design further up than perfect center. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but in the art world, it usually looks really good 
um, and a little bit more even to the eye if your designs are a little bit up far up from the center of your project. That goes for a lot of different things, but specifically for this. So you can see that, let me move this one out of the way. You can see that that's not totally centered because when we stand it up, you get to see more of the face if you're standing, looking at it on say like a front porch or something. So that's why I put it up a little bit, and give a little extra space on the bottom versus the top. That's a great tip. Yeah. Things just look better to the eye that way. That's like a classic art thing if you're like doing a matted print or something like that. Okay, now this, um, I see the question, does it stick? No, so this is dried paint. So it's not necessarily gonna stick to the surface. So that's where our Mod Podge Outdoor comes in. Now, if you were using this for an interior, um, like your front doorway or something inside the door um, or on a mantle, you do not have to use the outdoor formula. You can use a mat or a gloss or whatever you'd like, um, and it'll seal the paint perfectly no matter which one you use. But like I said, I'm planning on having these pumpkins outside. So I wanna use Mod Podge Outdoor. There's all kinds of different Mod Podge formulas for all kinds of different projects. So depending on what you're doing, pick the right formula for you. Michaels has literally every formula of Mod Podge that we make. So um, shop around if you're doing a different kind of um, uh, project and you need a different formula, check it out, we probably have it. Um, if you were to do this on like a tumbler or something, you can definitely use our dishwasher safe. I hadn't really thought of that until just now. If you're doing like a mug set or something and you're using paint skins, um, you could definitely use dishwasher safe. Okay, so we're just gonna grab a paintbrush here or a Mod Podge brush, whatever you have. And Mod Podge Outdoor is one of the thicker Mod Podge formulas. So it's really nice and convenient for this kind of project because we don't want this little paint skin to slip and slide around. Okay. And Dylan, while you're doing that, Linda had a question. Um, she said, I would love to try this with my circuit machine. Do you happen to recall the setting you used? Um, I believe you mentioned stencil. You know what? I really don't. I don't remember um, what we did. We did it a long time ago. You're going to have to experiment. I'm sorry for not knowing, um, but it did work really well. It cut it really crisp. I want to say we used like a leather um, blade or something. I'm not super familiar with those machines, um, so I'm sorry I can't give you more information but it did work and it worked really, really well. And I think the mats that we have here are just like the regular standard and like the extra tack and the low tack. And I'm pretty sure we just used the standard mat for it. So definitely just experiment. Sorry, I don't have specifics. Okay, you can see I put a thin coat of my outdoor Mod Podge on there. And we're just gonna give this a little place here. Now, since this is really pliable and our pumpkin has lots of ridges, we wanna make sure that we smooth it down into those ridges, because you wanna seal this so that none of the elements will get to it. Now, the full court drizzle is, like I said, indoor outdoor, but if we're using outdoor Mod Podge, you wanna make sure that you put a sealer coat on top. So once this is dry, I would go back over it with my outdoor Mod Podge. It's not gonna change any of the glow or anything like that. It'll still be glowing beautifully and it'll be sealed to go outside. And if you use like a matte paint or something else other than a multi-surface, you can just go ahead and do the Mod Podge outdoor on your whole pumpkin. And that would seal the entire thing if you didn't have a multi-surface paint. So that's kind of a little tip there. Okay, so that I think about wraps anything up for our projects. If you do, you guys have any more questions? We'll give you a second. Um, if you have any more questions, put them in the comments, and Stephen can relay them to me. Absolutely. Here's our other one here. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can use bulk art drizzle. Clearly, here um, we're going to be back in, uh, I believe, November and December doing some more projects. Uh, more holiday themed projects, but I would love to see what you guys create with Folk Art Drizzle for the Halloween season, because like I said, this is a fantastic product for Halloween. I'll bring my black light flashlight back out and you can see just how well it glows. I know it's like glowing super bright on camera here. And this is just a cheap little black light flashlight. If you have those black light bulbs that you put in your sconces outside your front door for Halloween, it is a really, really great way to show off these cool formulas because we have kind of built that into the formula, whether you know it or not, it's really kind of fun. And then I did see a comment there, does Drizzle ever go on sale? Yes, of course, all Michael's products go on sale 
Um, I don't have that information that's locked up in, in uh, Michael's HQ, but you can definitely check uh, your Michael's flyers and their newsletters. And if you haven't signed up for Michael's emails, they have really inspirational and informational emails. So sign up for Michael's email newsletter, and I'm sure you'd find out exactly when those sales are. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, Any it seems like we had, uh, no other questions, but it seems like we had a lot of people who had a lot of fun watching this class and yeah. can't wait to get started with Drizzle. Uh, and I'm super excited to get crafting with some paint skins right after this. Uh -huh. There you go. Okay. Well, um, be sure to tag your uh, projects with the hashtag make it with Michaels, folk art drizzle. Uh, make sure that we can see them and show us on the plaid Let's Paint group, Facebook group. If you're not a member of that, we'd love having all kinds of different painting techniques represented in there. So we'd love to see more paint pouring. Um, and until next time, uh, we'll see you guys, see you guys later. Bye, guys. Bye.